like actually committed to myself that yes i i will become a writer and i think the decision was finally made um, on the last day of my uh, third year in college them love life 300% uh, and that people you know people like us with all our abilities uh, intact we don't use those abilities we we are crossing along at 40% 50% 60% so i learned a lot from them i learned a lot about grit and determination First of all, thank you so much, ma'am, for taking the time out. You've been always very supportive to Mitti Ke Rang. I keep hearing from Amit that you always contribute and help us in reaching out many people. And no, I always it's, wanted... it's always lovely to be connected with Mitti Ke Rang because Amit and his team are doing amazing work. And I think all of us should help when uh, somebody is doing something. It's it's rare. It's a it's a rare ability to be you know. to be putting your life on hold and doing things for others and i see amit doing a lot of that and so i'm always glad to help right so ma'am uh, today we are going to talk about your journey as a writer and hopefully we can all learn who are aspiring writers or a lot of our audience are keen interest in writing maybe blogs wow. or social media so that's where i asked amit that can we talk with ma'am so we'll talk about writing today So before we absolutely. jump absolutely I hope I'm able to help all the uh, people uh, that listen to this yes so can so you tell me can you tell me ma'am when you first realized that I wanted to be a writer that what was the striking moment when you realized that yes this is something I want to do so you know amit i um, i grew up um, in the 70s early 70s um, in a little uh, suburban town in mumbai mm -hmm. and um, i was a daughter, uh, daughter of a railway man so we were a middle class family four children parents grandmother and um, in terms of uh, you know material things we didn't have a lot because you know a government employee and also an employee my father was a person who believed that everybody has the responsibility of sharing their resources with people who have lesser than us or people who needed that uh, resource more than we did and so we didn't have anything material in terms of there were no luxuries in our life what we got was a room full of books a house full of books a father pampered us silly with books you know our house was full of books and he said if you have a book as a friend you don't need anything else and for me it was very true what he said because i was a very shy child um, till well into my 20s i was a very shy reclusive person and so i i found it very diff difficult to go out and make friends and so the books actually became my friends every time i felt unloved or neglected uh, or hurt by the world or by friends friends can be, be very hurtful when you're young yes. you you know your, your friends have the power to hurt you that much more and so every time i was hurt i would retreat into my house and retreat into my books so that was a little universe i created for myself and the more i read books the more i fell in love with the written word Uh, and slowly you know one day i started dreaming that one day i would have a book with my name on the jacket of the book and it was a very audacious it was a completely audacious dream for somebody from my situation you know from where i was at that point um, we had no money we had no prospects all we had was this burning desire to read and you know uh, just do something and um, i i dreamt of writing a book back then i must have been what 8 or 10 or something wow. i dreamed all the world that uh, i wanted to be a writer because i was scared somebody would laugh at me because i was friendless i was shy i was tongue tied and why would anybody read what i wrote but you know in in my in uh, in my teenage years when i was in college was when i first like actually committed to myself that yes i i will become a writer and i think that decision was finally made um, on the last day of my uh, third year in college i, I did my um, uh, arts degree uh, with six papers in politics i was a political science major but on the last day of my college um, i decided that i would write and the way i would write is by becoming uh, a journalist 
And so that was the beginning of my journey. I was, I was 20 when I knew that I would write for the rest of my life. So do you remember a first piece you ever wrote and showed it to someone that that first feedback you Oh received? my God, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I remember it so well. And I probably will disown it if I see, if somebody said I wrote it, I would probably, I would probably disown it now. But you know, those, those were the days when um, Rajiv Gandhi was, uh, you know, um, he, he had captured the nation's uh, imagination and the new, this new uh, prime minister, this, this new person who promised India a different uh, uh, way of living, a new reality. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I wrote, I was young then and uh, I never knew I could be funny, but I wrote a funny piece uh, on him and how he would pilot the nation into a new reality. And that was the first piece I wrote. It was carried in my college journal. And for me, that was a big boost, you know, because, mm -hmm. because when, when you're 18 or 19, being noticed in your college is a big thing. And for me, it was really big because in college too, I had been largely faceless. You know, I would just attend my classes and go home, attend my classes and go home. I had three friends and that's it. So when, when um, the editor of the college magazine actually said, oh, this is good and we'd like to carry it, I was really thrilled. I wish now I had kept that, you know, I don't have it anymore. I'm, to, I'm talking about 80, um, 86 or 87 or something. So it's a long, long time long ago. Time ago. <laughs> okay. So this is, is always good <laughs> to hear these stories from people who have progressed and then someone who is just trying, he will be like, okay, how do I publish? So yes, I think everybody goes through that feeling as a writer that you are not... Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, even now there is so much even now, there is so much, um, I don't know whether to call it snobbery, but there is such a premium on being a published author, you know, um, wh wherever I go, you know, if, I, if I'm in a crowd where people don't know uh, me, somebody will ask, uh, oh, so what do you do? And I'll say, I'm an author. And then the next question will be, oh, are you a published author? <laughs> and I'll say, yes, I am a published author of several books. But when I say that also, I feel a little pang, you know, that, that you have to validate yourself like this to people. I always say that writing is an intensely personal thing. You know, you write because right. it gives you joy. You write because it gives you meaning, your life meaning. Um, I write because if I don't write, I'll go mad. That is my zone. If I don't write, if I've not written two consecutive days, mm -hmm. the third day I drive everybody in my house around the bend. So, <laughs> so that, is how, that is how much I need to write. So I really think, you know, for those of uh, your friends who listen to this, I, I really want to tell you that publishing should not be the end, uh, you know, goal of your writing. Yeah. The end goal should be that you want to write, you feel compelled to write and it not having written gives you sleepless nights. That is why you should write because it gives you joy and it gives meaning to your life. So ma'am, uh, I would love to, I mean, I actually would love to cover all your books. I have so many questions about them, mm -hmm. but given the time constraints, I have chosen three books. Let's see how time goes and depending on. So the first yes. uh, book, which I could just glance through, honestly speaking, uh, is Leading mm -hmm. Ladies, Women Who Inspire India. Mm -hmm. And yes. so I read a uh, couple of stories and I found them pretty uh, impactful and I think Mithikaran also works in the similar kind of field. Yes. So a lot of volunteers and um, other people I will share with them in their hearing. They all must read this book. So in yes. the preface, you know, went... I don't know whether you know uh, yeah, yeah, whether right. Mithik, uh, um, Leading Ladies is also in um, three other Indian languages. Mm -hmm. And so my, I, you're asking me probably why I uh, wrote this book. But I was so enthusiastic to tell you because you said that so many of your volunteers want to, and I know that you work with women in underprivileged communities. Yes. So I wanted to tell you that it is in Hindi and it's in Marathi. Yes. And um, maybe someday, you know, you should have somebody read those book, those chapters from those books to those women who you work with. Because I really do think that women need the stories of other women as, uh, you know, just to look up to and to follow in their footprint, you know, footsteps. Because alone, we are probably scared. We are a little lost. We are not sure of uh, ourselves. We are not confident we can do anything. But together, we are so many, isn't it? Yes, um, yes. 
we we say even if it sounds like a cliche we say that women hold up up the sky but women don't get their due that much due you know so so they should also get half the credit isn't it or mm-hmm. half the support or everything half but they, it, in reality that's not what happens and so i wrote leading ladies uh, when i was uh, i just finished uh, about 25 24 to 25 years of journalism and then i said now i want to write the books that i want you know there were stories that i wanted to write about the women i had met during my journalism days you know i would meet because journalism is a field which is very very people oriented i would meet so many people and a lot of these were women who were making a difference in the way we live our lives you know women uh, like path breaking work Uh, trend setting women women who were doing things that were not usually being done by women at that stage uh, in um, india's history and a lot of them were in the in unfortunately because i was a business journalist i would uh, i would most of the women i met were you know um, connected to corporate india but i heard such amazing stories from them and i saw their personal growth and i saw that not all of them were born with silver spoons you know they they were women like me they were women who had worked their way up coming from middle class families only by the support that they got from their uh, parents and because of their huge self confidence their huge determination to do something with their lives and i said that i i would often attend uh, press conferences or have meetings with these women and by, and when i was when i was in my 20s i would wonder you know what was it that these women were doing right that i was not doing why were, how did they get to the place that they were you know corner office and you know, 2000 people reporting to them and their name uh, in the media and uh, on the cover of magazines and i always said that i want to know what they do i want to know what what are their um, what are their philosophy, what is their life philosophy what is the attitude you know what what are the attitude the attitudinal changes that i can make so that i can be like them so many things that um, that i could carry to other women like me i wanted to capture their stories and so in 2010 2009 i left my journalism after 24 years mm-hmm. and uh, i just said i'm going to start writing this put together their stories and 2010 was this book and you know it's a sense of complete joy for me that exactly 10 years later that book continues to be anywhere somebody reads it they will write to me or they'll call me or they connect with me in some way saying that mm-hmm. these are such amazing stories of ordinary indian women who are now you know globally recognized some of them are globally recognized some but most of them are well known in india and doing so much work of consequence yes and um, i am very proud of that book and yes. for me it was also this this huge confidence booster you know because i after 25 years almost in journalism i was sleep walking through that i i was like what else can i do here i was beginning to get bored with uh, though i hugely loved my journalism career but i was also getting bored because there are only so many different ways you can uh, write a new story <laughs> and so when this book became uh, very popular when this book received so much much it was long listed for the crossword um, book award in that year it didn't make the cut but you know it didn't it didn't get the award but for me it was reiteration that if you do something with passion and if you do something with love mm-hmm. and with determination there is no way you can go wrong, go wrong. and that that's the lesson for all of yeah. us <laughs> yes so ma'am uh, can you can you share us i i know it's a kind of an unfair question that but which one is your which which story really moved you i mean if you can tell us that story it, oh yes to us yeah from leading ladies yes. uh, pt usha okay pt That's usha okay. the athlete you know yes because the 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 rest of the stories other than of course uh, um ilaben but of seva seva but uh, you know that i will not even talk about because she is this icon yeah. and uh, the rest uh, the rest were all largely women from uh, you know from the co- from the corporate world women who worked in rural centers and who have a lot of support uh, around them but pt usha was the outlier you know P- pt usha was when i traveled i traveled 
to Cochin. Now I, I traveled to Calicut and there from there I took a cab and I went to a village uh, in, in, in Calicut district and I went to her house and you know what I saw, what I saw was like the, the humility of that person, the determination to uh, help uh, the cause of uh, you know uh, athlete women athletes from underprivileged communities so what she does is pity usha her story you know her, everybody knows her olympic story how she missed it by a whisker but how you know um, i'm not sure you, you you know but she was called the paioli express Paioli. so she was paioli express was the express train that ran through her uh, village every day that that went past her village every day and Piti Usha came from a house which was so poor that uh, she could not even afford shoes to train when she was running but she had determination she wanted to run she wanted to make the uh, nation proud and so every morning much before the village had woken up she would be running uh, along the tracks mm. and the Paioli Express would speed past and she would run with it and she wanted to beat it. So that's why she was called Paioli Express. And um, for that woman to go and compete in so many international track events and get so many, uh, so much recognition for this country was in itself. And, you know, at this at a time when th that village, most of those villages had not much progress. For them to see a woman in shorts and t-shirt and running itself, you know, was was quite uh, scandalous, but she withstood all of that because she wanted to run and she wanted to bring glory to the country. That in itself was admiring, you know, admirable. But what I found even more admirable was the fact that after she retired from active uh, track events, she went back to a village and she could have just, you know, lived her life um, like, like she wanted. But she said, no, I didn't make it but I want to train women from around these areas because those uh, the women, she saw a lot of women with a uh, with lot of uh, potential. So she said, I will train them. So she has set up in her village, she has set up the Piti Usha uh, training center. for women. She selects women from underprivileged homes, but who have a lot of potential. She gives them good, uh, you know, good training, good nourishment, uh, good psychological support and all of that. And it is her, hope that one day one of these women will make it uh, in the Olympics. She says, the day that happens, I'll be a very fulfilled woman. Okay. So that was really inspiring for me. So this was your first book, ma'am, right? Uh, the first published yes. book, so to say? Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So from this book, I, when I was researching, I thought that, okay, this is, you, you have written this um, with a lot of research and I could read four or five stories. Uh, then I was researching for the next book, which is Gifted. So <laughs> here you had connections. I was presuming that, okay, we're in the business world. You knew many of these women, if not all. But then how come you shifted from this, this topic to the next topic, which is the Gifted? And I would love you to talk about it rather than I am doing any attempt even <laughs> describing that book. Yeah. So, so Gifted, uh, as you know, as you've seen the book, is a, a book about the inspirational lives of a lot of people with disability right. that I met. And that book happened by accident. I must very honestly, that book happened by accident because um, the Gifted was actually my third book. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Legacy was my second book. So okay. Legacy was a book I wrote almost immediately after Leading Ladies. And it's a book of uh, letters. It's, it's a collection of letters from eminent men and women to their, to their daughters. And I wrote it for a very personal reason. I wrote it because the year that I wrote Legacy, my daughter was turning 21. And I thought this is a sort of milestone year. And let me write a letter to her. So before she turned 20, when I started writing a letter to her, and when I started writing, there was so much that came out of me because, you know, I always think that daughters are so special. And so I wanted to tell her so many things, so many messages. And then the thought came to me, like you will understand, you will uh, identify this with this. The thought came to me that if the mother say, sends a letter like this, either she would roll her eyes and laugh or she would say, mom, another bhashan, you know. So I didn't want for that to be seen as a bhashan. So I said, instead of me writing a letter, instead of just me writing a letter, let me just get a lot of people who I admire to write letters to their daughters. Okay. And so I set out on this journey. 
and 20 of some of India's most admired people, you know. So the top of the list for me, of course, was Mr. Prakash Padukone, who, who was my childhood hero. You know, I remember sitting on my uh, father's lap and watching him play badminton on our black and white television. And he was that kind of hero to me. I wouldn't move till he was playing. I'd just sit there and watch, watch him play. And the whole world admired him. And in India, he was like our hero, isn't it? And so he was there. Mr. Narayana Murthy was there. Uh, India's very famous um, you know, lawyer, uh, Zia Modi was there. And uh, the artist Jatin Das was there. So I traveled and I met most of them. And I interviewed them about what were the really important things for their daughter? What did they want to tell their daughters? What are the messages? What were their hopes for their daughters? And uh, so these interviews uh, spanned many, many hours with them, you know, back and forth talking about things. They talked about their own lives and, you know, what their children could learn from their lives. And then when I came back home and then I put all those, uh, I, from the transcriptions of the interviews, I made letters for them. And I sent it to them saying, is this what you wanted to say? And when they said yes, then all of that, all those letters came in together in a book called Legacy. Legacy went on to become a very, very popular book. I think some of three or four of the letters in that book is being, are being taught in uh, are part of uh, school cur curriculums in textbooks now. And um, source of much joy to me because every time I write a book and when I interview people, I learn so much from meeting them, you know. I, I really do think we have to look up to somebody. You have to follow, uh, you have to take lessons from people who have been there before you and done things in life. And so I went to Bangalore to launch the book in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. V.R. Firoz, who was the managing director of SAP at that time, I had called him to launch the book along with uh, Britannia's MD, uh, Vinita Bali and Air Deccan's uh, Captain Gopinath. So these were the three people who were launching the book in Bangalore in a bookstore. And um, very interesting session we had. And after the session, uh, Firoz uh, came up to me and said, you know, this is a lovely idea and you've written this book. I was wondering uh, if you would want, if you would consider co-authoring a book with me uh, about people with disabilities. And it was so out of the blue, it was so unexpected. So I said, oh, you know, I'd never thought about this, but it sounds very interesting and uh, come on, let's do it. And so I set out on this journey, Firoz and I, and um, we interviewed all these people. We interviewed several people, like we interviewed about 30. Unfortunately, you know, only 20 stories could be there in the book because th those are the, you, if you want a particular size book, then you can only put so much there. But it was, it was a kind of journey that taught me so much, you know, in terms of, I will never again look at a person with disability thinking, oh, how sad for him or her. You know, now I know that those people uh, might not have, uh, you know, uh, might, might, might not be like us, but that doesn't make them any less. In fact, I find that some of them live life 300% uh, and that people, uh, you know, people like us with all our abilities uh, intact, we don't use those abilities. We we are cruising along at 40%, 50%, 60%. So I learned a lot from them. I learned a lot about grit and determination um, and the and survival instinct and uh, positivity. So many, so many things. I know I learned about acceptance. Um, I learned about inclusion. I learned so much from uh, from writing that book and meeting those people in the in the book. You know, so yeah, it was an, it was an amazing okay, journey. Amazing. And those people are still my friends. You know, all of them are still my friends. It's the amazing thing about my journey has been that with every book I write, I have made friends. And then all of those friends follow me. You know, they're always there to help me, to support me. We are, we are all there for each other. Mm -hmm. And so writing has also got me friends. That's a miracle, you know. If you remember, I told you that I was friendless. I was shy. But as I've written and as my, over the years, I have made lots of friends and I know that I can call them up in the middle of the night and they'll be there for me. So this is like, the, we, we unfortunately don't have time to cover all your books. So I would like to touch That's upon nice. the writing process because uh, I'll, I'll come to this. You do something for the aspiring writers also. But before I yes. go there, 
Uh, ma'am, is there any like we hear this all kind of things that writers should work like accountants and should not wait for inspiration, or they should have a discipline. <laughs> a lot of stories we hear. Yeah. So what so, what's so, your take and how you go about it? So, like I said, for anybody to become a writer, your pen has to touch paper. That is what I say. That it's no good thinking about writing or declaring that I'll become a writer. You become a writer only when you start writing. And so the first tip that I will give all everybody who's listening is that start writing. Don't worry initially about whether you're writing great literature or whether your punctuation and your grammar and your whether you're writing great flourishing sentences. None of this is important. It is important to start writing because it has to become a part of you. You have to write every day. So make writing part of your everyday routine. Even if it is five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, even if it is just only writing in your journal, or if you're angry, or if you're happy, or whatever, but write every day. That is when you will get into the skin of writing. Write every day. And the second really important thing is that you should read every day. That right. is really important. You know, a lot of people don't read enough. And then they say, that, oh, I'm not inspired. Oh, you know, I don't know how to write. But I'm saying that if you read, you have to, like, my thing is that if an athlete can train every day, uh, if a singer um, does riyas every day, uh, if, why can't a writer write every day? So it is, it is a craft and you have to hone your skill, you have to hone your craft and you have to do that every day. You have to get yourself down to sit on your chair, get yourself the table and just stay there, you know, write every day and read every day. And I'm, it is embarrassing for me to say this, but over the years, my reading seems to have come down because I spent so much time writing that by the time that is over, I've, I've not read enough. But it is really important to read from diverse subjects on diverse subjects, a variety of genres and as you keep reading and as you keep writing, you will discover your true writing voice. That's it. And um, writing blocks happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, don't use that as a, you know, excuse to not write. So if you feel the writing block, you know, writer's block one day. So say, okay, today I'm not going to write, but do something that interests you. Go out into the world, you know, um, wander around, watch things, watch people. And when you do, when you've done something that gives you joy, maybe one day, two days, then come back to your writing. It can't be this long, drawn-out, drought situation that you're not writing at all, because that that itself will pull you down. That will further uh, dry up your inspiration. So do come back. Do remember to come back to your writing. So do you follow any schedule, particularly when you are not working on a book? So I'm presuming when you are working on a book, you are quite busy, right? <laughs> But when you are not when I'm not writing when I'm not writing a book I write um, I write in newspapers I write column I, you know I write a lot of stuff I, I write uh, for online publications mm -hmm. but I, I write continuously I write a lot of for news newspapers now I don't write news now I write features but all my writing will have people at the center of it you know because I draw my energy from people I draw my inspiration from people. So, so any schedule you follow? What discipline I have? Sometimes I find myself completely indisciplined. You know, there are a lot of times I have to remind myself, okay, I finished a book. That doesn't mean that I have nothing else to do. <laughs> you know, typically when I finish writing a book, I will wander around for two, three months. Mm -hmm. Like I will let out of jail. And it's not even like anybody is forcing me to write a book. I write because it gives me joy. But when a book is, you know, finished and the manuscript is gone, I feel so such a sense of liberation. Okay, I've done this. Then I say, okay, now I'm for three months. I'm not going to do anything. And I really don't do anything. I don't write. Mm -hmm. And that makes me crabby. And that makes me angry and um, not a nice person. So then I come back to my computer and right. laptop and then I'm happy. Okay. Um, what discipline I have when I'm writing a book mm -hmm. is that um, I work like a maniac mm -hmm. after my interviews or what if I'm, if it's a, interview centric book if it's a people centric book then it takes up a lot of time you know there are transcriptions to be done there are chapters to be written then there is revision there is so much stuff going on so it pretty much takes away your entire day mm -hmm. but um, yeah so the main thing to do is to make sure that even if you get up for lunch come back on time if you get up for tea come back on time it is just 
just the physicality of sitting down and getting that book together yeah. it's it's hard work it requires a lot of focus when i'm right towards the end of finishing or to, towards the end of a book i don't step out of my house for weeks together i just like a maniac i just finish that and then write and revise and write and revise <laughs> so yeah it's physically and mentally very taxing so do and you actively... sometimes you're exhausted okay so do you actively look for the next subjects or it just happens that how that process works it happens you it know happens. a lot of people ask me this question a lot of people ask me and i sometimes think back and i i i find out that i figured out that i have never really thought what should i write next by the end of one book i already know what what next i'm going to write it's it's just there maybe it's my maybe it's my wiring you know because i have spent the entire entire ad, my entire adult life writing so it's like part of my skin it's part of me it's me so i'm wired to think like that and also i think i don't i get bored very easily and so i don't want the prospect that i'll finish a book and then i won't have anything to do so by the time a book is over i already know that i'm going to write this and i don't immediately start writing it like i said 2 3 months i just waste my time wandering around but i think that is that is also very required you need to rejuvenate yourself you need to you know just let go for some time and not when your work and your passion become you know begins to feel tedious is the time to take a break so by the time i've finished a book i'm exhausted mentally because it's a lot of hard work it's very stressful work because you're there is a book coming to the universe with your name on it and you have to be proud of it when it comes out so it's a lot of hard work so i'm so sure my, my discipline is when i'm finishing a book i this is something that all of you everybody who is listening should you know I, practice it is to wake up early in the morning i know a lot of the younger generation are night birds they, you know they are on uh, they they are connected to the world and so they sleep at 3 am i believe i've seen a lot of it happening yes but when i wake up early like when i'm finishing a book or when i have to write a critical chapter i wake at a wake up at 3:30 or 4 or 4 in the morning when when the universe is quiet there are there are no barking dogs there are no courier walas no telephone calls no nothing it's just you and your mind um, and your pen and paper or your laptop or whatever it's just magical so i i get so much work done in the early hours because really we live in a world which is full of noise you know even if we put noise cancelling um, you know ear plugs or ear phones it's not the same you know when you wake up in the morning and write or do whatever it is that you want to do i find that my productivity is huge it's multiplied multiplied by what it otherwise is and also the quality of what i write is better and this is also something when i wake up in the morning and if i sometimes go for a walk at 5:30 or 6 your creative process is unlocked dramatically you know i i find that communing with nature you said how do you know what you'll write i think when i walk Mm-hmm. there is a dialogue going on inside when when i'm when i'm uh, communing with nature i'm thinking of what is subconsciously i'm not consciously looking at uh, you know anything solving problems or anything but it is there is something magical about waking waking up early and just being out alone alone i'm sure you will be not popular <laughs> on this topic with a lot of people they are sleeping <laughs> at 3 am 4 am these days Yes. Is there, is yes. there any alternative you will you will suggest that somebody just cannot wake up early? Is is there any because um, you are also a writer's coach? So from that point of view, I'm asking you this question: What if somebody cannot wake up early? <laughs> I don't know because my my thing always has been that you write your best when your mind is fresh. Okay. And. i i'm not meaning to be judgmental but i would want everybody to try this thing mm-hmm. and also it's only a habit isn't it um, there is nothing like i can't wake up early it's you programmed yourself to do that so unprogram yourself and set your reset your bio clock but if no if for some reason you're not able to do it my my 
tip always would be to write when your mind is fresh when your mind is happy when mm -hmm. when you have energy because writing takes it's it's uh, it takes a lot out of you so write when you're feeling energetic mm -hmm. you know okay. then you will find that a lot of stuff comes out of you if you're half asleep and then you try to write there's nothing much going to come out that of, <laughs> that's of any consequence okay so your initiative get writing which is for the young writers or it's aspiring for, yeah, writers yeah and it, there is also a part of senior citizen cs uh, i will tell you how this began so get writing i started get writing in 2010 okay. um, 2011 jan mm -hmm. my book came out in 2010 december mm -hmm. And 2011 Jan, I spent on the road, you know, going from bookshop to bookshop, city to city, uh, smaller towns, everywhere launching the book. And wherever I went, there would always be somebody, you know, a young person, an old person, a middle-aged lady. But they'd approach and say that, um, ma'am, you know, this happened to me and there is a story that I want to write, but ma'am, I don't know how to write. I don't know, you seem to have put it across so well, but I don't know how to write. And um, I don't even know how to start. And when enough people had said this to me, you know, in, in various places, it's not like one step, one specific person. Various cities, I was approached by people. And um, I said, then here is this gap in the market. People want to write. There are stories everywhere in everybody's life. There is a story. They don't know how to write. So I said, let me start this, this project where I will help people to write, you know, help them to start writing and then maybe write their stories, whatever they want to do. And um, a lot of my friends told me, don't get into this. You're not a good teacher. You have no patience. <laughs> you know, you're restless. You won't be able to teach. But I said, yes, but this is a subject that I'm passionate about. And I really do want to help people because some of the people who came, they said, one of them had tears in her eyes saying, ma'am, I have this story and I want to write. Please help me to write because I don't know where to go. In our schools, in those times at least, creative writing was not something that was taught. Schools. We, you know, we just wrote normal, boring essays, normal. school picnic or my summer vacation or some, some such thing. So I started Get Writing. The youngest, the youngest participant in that first workshop was eight years old. Oh, and wow. the oldest was 18. <laughs> The oldest was 80 and we all sat wow. together. Some 45 people attended that first workshop, which is amazing, you know, because it was a concept which had never been tested in India before. It was just, what was a writing workshop? Nobody knew, but, but it picked enough interest for 45 people to turn up at 8.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and write with me the entire day. And Get Writing has never really looked back after that. You know, it's been 10 years now and I have, taken it to so many cities and so many people and I take it to corporate houses where uh, where I use it as uh, mm -hmm. you know, people just call me to do uh, initiatives that help uh, top management, middle management. So I've taken it there. Then four years ago, I started something called uh, Writing with Women. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm, I'm very, very proud of this thing that I started. And I it was it came out of this observation that I had that you know, in my writing workshop, after every workshop, when everybody went home, left the, you know, uh, the venue, there'd always be one woman waiting or a couple of women waiting who'd say, ma'am, you know, I wrote this in your class today, but I was not, I was not confident enough to read it out because my workshops always have a lot of peer sharing and all of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't, she would say that I was not comfortable sharing this with a, you know, a lot of men in the class. and. So, so I realized over the years that women are not comfortable or not confident enough to stand up and own to something they had written or own up to a, an experience or talk about an experience because that's the way women are mostly, you know, a lot of women are raised like that to not express themselves or to be standing up and confidently reading out something. Or So I said we, women need a safe heaven to share our experiences. Women need a place where they will not be judged or ridiculed or sneered at for something they did or did not do. So I started um, Get Writing, uh, I think four years, four and a half years ago. And that first workshop had Thermax, former chairperson of Thermax, Anu Aga, uh, mm -hmm. 
attended that workshop and she had such a blast and so did a lot of women who they came they were from from different you know segments of society different class different experiences different socio economic realities but they all came and they wrote and they shared their writing and it was such a it was such a fun thing and it was so joyful and it was also you know some of those women are still in touch with each other some of those women have friendships now so that was what i wanted i wanted to help women not just discover themselves or their uh, you know creativity but also forge bonds with other women and that that's perfect it's like it's been years every time i hold a writing with women workshop it's it's very very soul fulfilling for me yes so it's a great community and i think it's not only in pune uh, it, so i think all yes, can join it, i take it too community. we all can be a part of it right of course of course of course so uh, can you give us um, Uh, uh, start, uh, somebody who is just starting out because now right now a lot of people due to covid are sitting at home and they're <laughs> trying to write right that yes <laughs> they were always interested but because of corporate jobs or some other things they yes. now they're trying so any tip or a starting point you can give that okay just start here start about start writing about this because many people including myself we struggle with what should i write about <laughs> so where <laughs> so where you know finally you know Yeah. So funnily enough, Saket, or uh, my entire life, the last ten years of my writing workshop uh, thing, I have not held a single online workshop. I have been for years. I've had my workshoppers from other cities say, "Ma'am, please start." Uh, mm -hmm. You know, an online thing, and I'm very tech. I was. I would say, no, no, I don't know about technology, and I don't know all this. So mine will be proper. You come to my venue, and we will workshop together. And then COVID happened, and I find found myself going crazy sitting at home. I was writing a book that got completed, but you can't write a book the entire day. And then I started getting calls from past students of mine saying, "Ma'am, please let us do a writing workshop." And then. I said, "Look, I don't know how to do all of this." They said, "Ma'am, Zoom, hai na?" <laughs> and then, so then that first Zoom one, you know, my workshop was only told me, "This is how you do it. This is how you do it." And then, this last three months, I've 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 uh, done three three only writing with women and seven get writing workshops, all online. Oh, okay. and it has been amazing because because everybody is sitting at home. Everybody has. dedicated time everybody is bored out of their wits and they're saying that let us use this time to learn something new and to have some fun and to to express yourself creatively so covid though a tragic thing to happen for me it has meant that i have rediscovered i have discovered new ways to help people to get their writing started and i'm enjoying myself hugely the tip that um, what tip and where to write from i always say if nothing else comes to you write a journal every day mm -hmm. or write what comes from within you you know don't try to read somebody's book and then write like them that is the worst thing to do because your writing has to be about what your personality is your writing will have your voice your writing will have your personality mm -hmm. your writing will be colored or influenced by your life experiences so don't look to be like a writer that you admire you will never be that writer because his experiences her experiences are different in life so that is something that that all of you have to remember that you can't be like somebody else and you should not even be want to be be like you should be like you you should be proud of who you are so that is something really important to know uh, and also to remember that you know not all of you might become published authors right and that is not the end goal the thing is that if you want to write you should be able to write so don't be discouraged by people asking you whether you have been published and where have you been published and all of that write to express yourself don't try to impress anybody that is really important to learn that you know to remember otherwise it can be very writing is a very solitary journey you it is just you and your pen and paper and your thoughts or your laptop and your thoughts so you should have that determination that i'm going to any 
there should be this burning passion inside you to write otherwise you know if it if you're in it just because it's glamorous a lot of people come to my workshop saying i want to write a book mm -hmm. and it's largely because they want they think it's a very glamorous job and i really want to tell all of you that writing is not a glamorous job it's hard work it takes away two years of your life if you're writing a book you know end to end like at least i take that much one and a half two years so these are things to remember always and also read a lot you know if you want if you want to become a writer reading is non negotiable you have to read every day you have to read a lot of books so what happens to the get reading workshop so let's say if somebody wants to attend now you are on zoom or online you are doing it so a lot of people would be interested in knowing that okay so can can you take us through that uh, briefly so so my writing workshops are basically i give you the basic tools you know writing like every every other craft writing is also a craft that can be honed with practice you if you if you have to know the tools of the trade you right. have to know how to use them so that is what i will give you and and i will teach you to write uh, from an authentic place in your heart i will teach you to write the things that you know very often things happen it it happens that you don't really know what you want to write mm -hmm. till i teach you to start writing and once you start writing you realize oh this is what i so i help you to discover that i help you to discover the stories inside you and then set you off on your journey and i have had workshoppers in my workshop who have come to my class like seven eight times you know mm -hmm. there was one group who would keep 20 20 of them came the first time and the next three four times 15 12 15 12 if they're in the city they keep coming back to my class because i think writers also want that you know the the company of other writers um, brainstorm a bit exchange ideas it is part of the process you know if you are alone and writing for the first time it can be very discouraging but if you are in a group and where everyone is learning then that can be very inspiring and motivating so i'm almost running out of my time so i'll just lovely uh, no problem this. so um this this last couple of questions ma'am um, um, this is quite uh, different is what is writing means to you that you have answered it in different bits but what it is that when you were not a writer or when you used to not write can you even differentiate that part that how well, or... i think you know before writing i was lonely hmm. before writing i was lost okay. before writing i was uh, voiceless mm -hmm. so writing helped me i discovered myself with writing i discovered a voice with writing i discovered my self esteem i dis i discovered myself you know it's it has given me my identity writing is my identity and tomorrow if i were not to write i would not know what else to do i mean i after after all these years of writing i have now become uh, an actor i've become a model i've become a writing coach i i've become a lot of things but if somebody still asked me uh, what are you i would still say i'm a writer because that's what i am that's my identity everything else is me trying to extend or push the boundaries of what i can do you know to express myself but writing truly i discovered myself with my writing okay so that's on that note i think we will end up uh, here thank you so much ma'am and i think most of your books are there on amazon so we'll be putting that uh, link in the description so people yes, can please buy them or um, i think ma'am have uh, you have your own website also you can visit the will yes it has not been updated in two okay. years because i've been too too busy doing like but but my contact numbers are there my contact numbers are with you and um, maybe when the next time i'm having a writing workshop i'll let you know so that you yes. know if we'll you if any of your uh, colleagues or anybody wants they yes. can join in we will pursue and thank you so much for having workshop. me over Yes, we'll pursue you to have a one workshop uh, with Nitya Kiran, and uh, we would love to tell so many people who are interested in this. And uh, we'll hundred percent that in uh, near future. Thank you yes. so much, ma'am. Always yes. you always been. Thank you so much. Kiran. And uh, on that note, thank, <laughs> thank all you. the best, all the best with all the things you do. And if there is anything that I can do, please reach out to me. And thanks for having me over. Thank bye bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. -bye.